Good morning. Today we uh, will be demonstrating the same day dentistry uh, procedure uh, on our scanner and we will go over the scanning and designing process. Uh, that way when you get to the clinic, um, if you want to design your crown and you're familiar with the video, you should be able to design uh, your crown in the clinic. So uh, I have a model with me here that has a crown prep on it. And I have both scanners uh, here. We have, we have four scanners, but we have two types here. The, uh, the TRIOS 3 is the first one that we use in the clinic. This scanner is like a, has a gun grip and the tip goes in and out like this. So this is the TRIOS 3. And the other scanner we have is the TRIOS 4. The TRIOS 4 comes in a pen grip like this. And if you wanna remove the tip, you have to twist it like this and pull it out, okay? Now, there are two positions of the tip. One position is when you're doing the mandible, you're gonna be holding it like this. Now for the maxilla, you're gonna flip the tip like that and you're gonna be scanning the maxilla or the upper. This is for the TRIOS 4. For TRIOS 3, as I just showed, the tip goes like this. If you're doing the mandible, you're gonna hold it like this. If you're doing the maxilla, you're not gonna twist it, you're just gonna pull it. And this is how you're gonna uh, hold it to scan the maxilla. So, we're gonna get started here. So here we have our model. We're gonna be scanning for a crown on number 19. We have our, uh, the screen here, the computer is already uh, set up and uh, I am currently, I already created a test patient. And here, when you get to this screen, if you can get a little closer. Um, so here, we're gonna select the in-house lab and we're gonna select number 19. And after this, you select anatomy and crown. And the material is gonna be Emacs. This, the design setting is gonna be Emacs. All right, so once you have that, you're gonna click on the small sc scanner button here. And now it tells you the scanner is ready. We have the model here. Now you're gonna hold the scanner to start the scanner, you're gonna press the, the trigger once. And you're gonna you're gonna start scanning here. So here I am scanning my model. Now you see to um, scan the mesial of the second molar I rotate the scanner like this and I tilt it a little bit so I can scan the mesial of the uh, second molar. Then the same thing, I tilt the scanner to scan the distal of the, sec of the uh, second premolar. All right, now we have the lower scan here. Uh, the software is asking me to mark my my tooth prep so I'm gonna just click anywhere on my prep I usually select the center of the prep then you're gonna go next or click the upper scan a better way to do this if you're holding the scanner in the clinic and you don't want to touch the computer just click the trigger and hold it and this is gonna pop up then move it to the right and release the trigger and it will take you to the next page. Then when you are on the next page, technically if you're, if you're scanning a patient, you will switch the tip like this and you're gonna be scanning the upper like this. So I'm gonna be scanning the upper the same way as if you're doing it in the clinic. I'm gonna start. And we have the uh, upper scan. I'm gonna 
switch the tip position back to the lower, click and hold, move to the right, release, and now you are at the page that uh, will allow you to uh, scan the byte. You're gonna close the byte like this, and you're gonna start the scanner on the uh, hard tissue surfaces of the teeth because this is the most reliable area. You're gonna click here and scan the bite a little, a little by little. All right, and usually the scan beeps that it identified the bite and. This is how it usually looks like. Then you're gonna go next. And um, after this, it usually post processes the scans, depending on how big the scan is, takes from 30 seconds to two minutes. All right, so now we are back. The um, the scan will look like something like this. Now, if you wanna, in the clinic, you can turn the color off and on using this switch here. So this is with color, this is without color. And at this stage, it's asking us to mark the margin line. So you're gonna click on the sharpest area on your margin line, like this here. and it will usually auto detect it. Now, one thing here, just few tips to control your model. Now I have a three buttons mouse. So with the mouse, click and hold the right click, it rotates the model. All right, so the right click and the mouse will rotate the model. And then if you wanna zoom in and out, you will use the uh, middle mouse scroll button. If you wanna pan the model like this, you're gonna click the middle mouse button and pan it around. So that's how I usually control the view of my model. At this stage, we're gonna refine the margin. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the uh, margin area here. Now, one thing is that you see the brush size is big. So if you click shift, you can decrease or increase the size of the uh, the area that you're adjusting on your finish line. But basically you can just click and, you know, usually I like to slightly overextend. That way, if something is uh, a little bit over in the clinic, you can go ahead and adjust it. It's easier to uh, subtract or remove from the margin than adding later, all right? So now I have my margin detected here. I'm gonna go next. The next stage is the insertion direction of the crown. Usually it, it's good in auto detecting the, um, the insertion direction. If you want to change it, change it to where you think the insertion correction is, is good to you and then click from view here. But usually you don't need to do that. You're gonna go next and the software will propose a design for you. When you look at the design here, the, these tools, if here, this is the transform tool. The transform tool will have buttons that will elongate the, the crown, uh, rotate, this red button will rotate, the yellow button, will taper the crown like you know like this the green will scale it like this we're gonna something happened here so we're just gonna reconnect it all right so the uh the next tool is the morph tool now this tool here is is like a sculpting tool but it just moves parts of the crown uh, I use this if, if I'm looking from the side and then if I click control, you see the free and the directional. You can go like this. 
um, I don't usually use I usually use this tool to uh, decrease the the um, marginal ridge or, or level the marginal ridge like that now I'm pressing control here the next tool is the wax knife the wax knife is a sculpting tool so there is the add feature there is the remove and there is the smooth usually I would use the smooth to uh, to smoothen the uh, the contours here now one thing is that if you want to show the upper the upper is the antagonist so it, it, it the shortcut button is the a button the uh, the adjacent teeth are the s button so if you want to hide this you just click the s so I'm gonna hide both just to show you what I'm gonna do with the wax knife um, so here we have the crown without the model now I'm gonna use the smooth tool this is the size of the brush so if you can if you want to increase the size of the brush here you can use this this tool here and then you can enlarge and decrease it like this now to do that on the keyboard I used I hold the shift button and the scroll wheel like this to change the size to change the strength of the uh, the brush you use this tool here the strength or you press the control and the up and down uh, mouse wheel button so what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna smoothen the um, the uh, contour here the cervical contour of the crown so we have this the next step is to verify the proximal contacts to do this there is this tool right here you're gonna click this button and then look from the inside of the model usually you want this number to be point minus zero zero uh, minus point zero uh, five so to do this we're just gonna add a little bit of material on the crown uh, this is a lot so I'm just gonna decrease the brush brush strength here and this is 0 0.06 I'll just decrease the brush strength a little bit more and now we have a 0 0.05 into the adjacent tooth which is 50 microns here we're gonna look on the distal contact it's uh, 0 0.04 I'll just add it at add to make it minus 0 0.05 and now we have our proximal contacts in a good place. The next step will be, if we go to this tool here, it automatically sets the proximal contacts. We don't need to do that at this point. We just need to set the occlusal contacts here to 0 0.07, which is 70 microns. So if we click here, if let's say we have a high proximal contact here like this, you see this is a high proximal contact if we go to this tool and we look at the occlusal and i set the occlusal contact to 0 0.07 press play you see what happened here it it took down the crown to 0 0.07 away from the opposing tooth at this point the uh, crown is is completed the contour looks good proximal contacts look good and we know that the occlusal contact is 70 microns so we just go next and we uh, will have the crown file here like this and the crown will be ready to mill in the lab upstairs all right that's all i i hope you find uh, this uh, video useful if you have any questions please uh, email me and uh, hopefully we will uh, see you in clinic Thank you.